G'day, Sean here, and these are the new NATO accessory rails with the NATO rail clamps. Let's get into it. Now, the NATO rail standard, well, that's been around for more than 20 years by now, but it's not something that really Ari has dabbled in up until now. And we've actually had a lot of people requesting that we build accessories to support the NATO standard. And when we introduced our PCA sets for the Sony Burano at the end of last year, there was a lot of fantastic feedback about the fact that that cage system now incorporates NATO rails into the side brackets on the camera. And actually this guy here, the NRC2, which which is designed for video transmitters. That was exceptionally well received and a lot of people asked to purchase that separately instead of just in well, one of the sets with the Burano. So now you can, and we're also introducing NATO rails. So what's new? Well, we have three lengths of NATO accessory rails. They're all called an NAR. So we have the NAR30, NAR60 and NAR90. And now we have four NATO rail clamps, so they're NRCs. We have the NRC1, which is for a 19 millimeter rod, typically if you're running lens motors on a side bracket. We have the NRC2, which is for video transmitters, but also works pretty well for something like a rear one. And we have the NRC4, which is another type of rod clamp, which our engineers, funnily enough, call uh, when you're running a unicorn rod, which is when you have a centered rod above the camera. More on that later. And we have the NRC5, which is a little cube here. And that's going to be quite familiar to people who've used the LMB 4x5 Pro Set with that accessory sliding rail as well. All right, let's start by talking about the rails themselves. Now our three lengths of new NATO rails are only made with the highest quality components. They're all hard anodized aluminium and they all have stainless steel components wherever there's something that moves. So screws and pins and safety locks. Now all of these NATO rails have a ARRI multi-hex screw built into them, which means that I can use a three mil, a four mil, a five mil or a five thirty second of an inch hex key to screw this in all at the same time. Um, which is nice, so any tool that you have on you will work. They all have a chamfered entry point, so it means that it's very simple to slide on one of the clamps here. And also the little safety pins here, they also have a chamfer, chamfer or a slope, which means that I can just slide it on without actually having to push down the pin when I put the clamp onto the rail. That little safety uh, pin as well, so it's sprung loaded, but it also has an extra little bit at the end of the NATO rail, which means that I can pull that down instead of having to push the pin down itself. And that is very useful in situations where you might have something blocking the pin on the end. So for example, with this NRC2, which is designed for a video transmitter, there's no way for me to kind of get into the uh, little safety pin on this side, but I can pull the pin at the end and then release it in this direction. So that is a nice little feature. The NAR30 itself is the smallest and lightest NATO rail we have. You'll see it's super thin. It's basically as thin as the um, NATO standard itself. The screw is captive, so I can't lose that, which is great. And it's been designed as a quick release NATO rail. So you can mount these all over your PCA components and then quickly detach and attach things like monitors or a focus bug system, for example. This only comes in a 3 8 inch standard. I mean, we've been supporting the ARRI Pinlock 3 8 inch standard and so have many manufacturers for many years, so that's not likely to be a problem. Um, but we've changed that a little bit with the longer rails, so let's move over to those. We have a NAR60 and a NAR90. Now that refers to the length in millimetres. I'm just going to explain all of these features with the NAR90 as it's a bit bigger. You'll see on the bottom, this also has a 3 8 inch uh, threaded screw uh, with the ARRI pin lock pins there as well. But the nice thing is, and what the little bit of, uh, you know, difference between this and other products is that it slides along. So it means that I have a huge range of adjustment for where I can place my NATO rail. And that will also come into play when we talk about use of these with CSS products like the Trinity, where it's you want to have fine adjustment of a counterweight, but more on that in just a minute. So down here, we have a sliding, uh, a slide is what we're calling them. So this is for the 3 8 inch standard and I can slide it out. And I do that by removing this little three millimeter screw or with a three millimeter Allen key. I can slide the slide out 
and then I can flip the screw around. So when I invert the screw, it means that I can use this with accessories that don't follow the pin lock standard. So for example, some of our film cameras back in the day um, didn't yet have the pin lock standard, but might have 3 8 inch holes. And so you can slide this backwards into the NATO rail. So the pins are then pointing upwards into the NATO side, which will explain why these are a little bit thicker to accommodate that. And then I can slide this along. It also might be useful if you wanted to run a NATO rail in an angle that's not supported by the pin lock standard. So a funky angle, you can totally do that. Now, all NATO rails will come natively supporting 3 8 inch uh, threaded holes with the 3 8 inch pin lock screw. However, for the NAR60 and the NAR90, we are also making available two other different slides. So this is a quarter 20 slide, and I can put that straight in here. And then I have a nice way to attach this to a quarter inch hole. And we're supporting the ARRI pin lock standard for quarter inch with this device as well. We have plenty of quarter inch pin lock holes all over our cages and many other manufacturers are also now supporting that standard. And of course, I can once again just unscrew the screw from the slide and then flip it around so that I can use this with a device that needs a quarter inch uh, screw but doesn't support the pin lock standard. The third standard that we're supporting with the NATO rails is these 2 times M4. Now that is the same mounting standard as the RMB3 which has been around for a really long time. It's the rod mounting bracket which came originally with the Alexa Mini and so I can just slide this in here and then put the safety stop screw back like that. Now this can't be lost. And then I can mount this to anywhere which I would have a, a pair of M4 holes, for example, on the side of this side bracket here. Now on the top of the NATO rail itself, there is also a threaded hole. And that threaded hole means that you can of course mount an accessory on there, which doesn't make a lot of sense. But what does make sense is that you can use one of our little CSS counterweights and I can screw that into here. And now because I have the freedom to slide the slide along and then choose how it's mounted on my device, when you're using a device like a Trinity or another stabilizer and you need to get excellent balance, well, you can use the whole NATO rail with counterweights on top of it as a movable counterweight itself, which will help you achieve the right balance. Okay, let's look at the clamps. So we have four NATO rail clamps available for the ARRI NATO rail system. The first of those is the NRC1 here, which has a 19 millimeter rod clamp in it. That's useful for mounting on the side of the camera. And then I can run rods here with lens motors and then quickly release the whole thing if I need to change setups, for example. Now, there's one extra little feature that I didn't mention about this uh, clamp in the Burano Tech Talk, which I've only just learnt, and that is that in some situations the engineers recognise that you could kind of get this into a position that it's very difficult to actually access the safety release to take it off, particularly if you're using a very slim NATO rail like the NAR30. So if I put this all the way to the top, there's an extra little hole in the clamp itself, which I assumed was for a screw, but it's not. It's actually so that you can release the little safety pin there and pull this off, which means that it's not possible to get this stuck, which I think is quite cool. So the second clamp in the system is of course the aptly named NRC2, and that is for video transmitters. I also went through this clamp with the Burano Tech Talk, um, but it basically is two parts. The top part here is where you would mount your video transmitter. There is a quarter inch screw here, which is captive and this little bar or wall at the back of the plate. And that's what you use to stop the transmitter from untwisting because it was going to be very difficult to support all the differing standards for anti-twist on all those transmitters on the market. We just have a sliding screw here so that you can butt your transmitter up against the wall to stop it untwisting. The clamp itself on the bottom, well, that is screwed in with these two screws here, but there are a whole different, a whole bunch of different ways that I can mount the clamp to the plate, which means that I can then orientate the transmitter in a whole bunch of different angles. Here I have one prepared earlier with one of our ARRI wireless video system transmitters, and you can see that it makes it an absolute breeze to be able to mount that to the side of the camera. Again, particularly if I was using our little quick release one, as I don't really need to adjust uh, the position of this, which is a feature of the NATO rail system. As I mentioned before, NRC3 will be coming at a later date. 
and the NRC4 is this guy here, which is also a rod clamp, but the orientation of the rod uh, compared to the NATO rail is different. Now this, which I think is hilarious, um, is designed for mounting a unicorn rod, as our engineering team call it, which is where I have a rod and I want to center mount that at the top of the camera, just like this. So that is really useful if you're in a stabilizer or a trinity and you want to have centered uh, lens motors so that the balance is more centered and not out at the extremities of the camera. So that is that NRC number four. The NRC5 is the last uh, NATO rail clamp that we have and that will be very familiar again to those of you who've used the LMB 4x5 accessory rail system. That is four 3 8 inch holes here with pin lock uh, holes in eight different positions so that if you have a device, for example, such as a Noga arm, then you can use this as a quick release for mounting a monitor to your camera or maybe mounting a focus bug system like so. That is the NRC5. All right, let's look at some CSS specific examples. The development of all of our NATO rail accessories was actually largely driven by our CSS department, who needed a way to be able to mount counterweights in such a manner that you could finally adjust them to achieve perfect balance of a system like a Trinity 2. So here's a couple of ways that you can do that. First off, here are our standard 150 gram uh, counterweights that have been around for a little while now, and I've mounted two of them to this NRC5 rail clamp. I've got the Nali, N90 at the top of the Trinity 2 ring here, and then I can slide this in, and this would help me achieve balance in a very fine manner of the whole Trinity 2 head, including the camera package, in relation to the post and the bottom stage. So I can lock that off like so. Second use case would be up here. So I already have a NRC4 NATO rail clamp attached to a NAR60, which is mounted to the SSB4 in the Trinity ring. Now that is part of the roll balance here. So when I have that in the middle, again, this unicorn mode thing that the uh, engineers came up with, it means that I can have my lens motors more centrally balanced and I can shift this over slightly also to adjust the roll balance um, of the camera package inside the Trinity. So I can put that like this, lock off the rail, and then put my motor here. The third way that you can use the NATO accessory rails to achieve a good balance on the Trinity might be something like this. So we've put this at the back here to make it easier to show you, but because we have that slide uh, built into the longer of the two NATO rails themselves, I can attach a counterweight to the threaded hole in the NATO rail, and then I have this nice, easily adjustable uh, counterweight in order to achieve good balance within the Trinity ring itself. And then all I need is my Allen key here to lock it off. That's also particularly handy, if you can see inside here, where I currently just have a counterweight screwed into the side of the camera, but I could also put that on a NATO rail without adjusting the um, width of that too much that it would go kind of interfering with the Trinity ring itself, and then also adjust the balance inside the ring there as well. So that's about all for now. Thank you so much for watching to the end of the video. If you have any questions or comments, please throw them down below. I would love to read them and hear what you think of our new NATO accessory rails and NATO rail clamps. All right, we'll see you in the next one. Bye.